Today, today the, the, today's gospel shows us just how much the Lord and why the Lord honored St. John the Baptist, starting with verse 28. Um, but if we could just backtrack to verse 18, to where St. John sends two disciples to inquire about these miracles, <clears throat> that, about these, these rumors of miracles that have been happening, we'll see something interesting. We see the consistency and the harmony between the life of St. John the Baptist and his message and between the life of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and his commandments, which is evangelize by example and in humility. Lead by example and in humility. Basically, because if you don't, lead by example, and that's basically the definition of hypocrisy, isn't it? Not sincerity. <clears throat> when the disciples of St. John the Baptist were sent to the Lord to ask if he is the coming one, he didn't even give an answer. Not in the way we would expect, at least. <clears throat> Not, so, th so there are at least four powerful reasons why the Lord Jesus Christ didn't say, just come out and say, yes, I am he, I am the coming one. Let's examine these and do like the Lord. So first it starts, so here's, here's a, a few verses before the, the gospel that we heard today. So in it starts with the Lord Jesus Christ raising the, the son of the widow. And then we, we read here, then the disciples of John reported to him concerning all these things, because they were, they were hearing about miracles now. And John, calling two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Notice what's the very next verse. He didn't say anything, did he? He didn't open his mouth. The very next verse, 21, And that very hour he cured many of infirmities and afflictions and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Jesus then answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things that you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. <clears throat> Why didn't Jesus Christ just say, yes, I am he? Uh, we have four reasons. One is Satan is listening. We forget. Sometimes it's better not to speak and, and just show by action. This is one of the reasons why our Lord Jesus Christ always spoke in parables, parables, parables. Figurative language, figurative language. Why? Because to reduce the envy and the destruction of the devil. Because Satan didn't actually know if he was, in fact, the Son of God until when? The cross. When our Lord conquered death by death, was able to go down to Hades and get the souls and come back up and open paradise. Then, that's when Satan finally knew for sure. And this is why the devil says, if you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, uh, command these, 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 these stones to turn into bread. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself over. <clears throat> and this is why St. Paul says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against uh, powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this age. It is to my advantage to heighten my senses and to realize that Satan never takes a break. So what's the take-home message here? Sometimes it's better to close this and just to lead by example. As Jesus Christ plainly and, uh, uh, answered, he didn't plainly answer, but his senses were heightened, being aware not of the resistance of people, that's nothing but of principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this age. So, we have to pay attention and lead by example. A second reason why Christ, Jesus didn't say, yes, I am he, you know, when the disciples were, were coming to inquire. A second reason he didn't just say, yes, it's, it is me, 
is because he's, he's, he's saying, my actions bear witness of me. I shouldn't have to say even. My, look at my actions. My actions bear witness. Again, the Lord is evangelizing by example, but in humility. J judge based on my actions. I know you're hurting. I know all the garbage you have been exposed to. I know <clears throat> that there have been a lots of deceiving religions, and there will be many, many more deceiving religions in, in, in the years to come. Just in the United States alone, look at how many people are, are, are striving, are, are thirsting for something or someone to follow. Just to feel right inside. And when these people come to you, will you be caught off guard? Will you know how to answer them? Will you know how to give a reason for the defense that is in you? It, we get, sometimes we have so many chances to speak about the Lord Jesus Christ. Do we just pass these up? Are we ready to give a defense? When they ask the question, well, why Christianity? What's, why, why, why not a different? What's so, what's so good about your religion? Aren't they all basically the same? Don't people ask this? What makes yours better? <clears throat> oh, well, because, uh, you see, because, you see, Jesus and the, the, Bi the Bible, so you have the Bible, and, uh, I'm sorry, can I start over? So, you have, you have the Bible, you have Christianity, and you have these main, you know what, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't ready for your trick questions. I don't know where to start. This is sometimes what happens, doesn't it? What measure do we use? Well, let's, what, what, what did the Lord Jesus Christ say? He says, look at the works of the leader of the religion. Look at the works of the leader of the religion and judge for yourselves. Look at my example and tell me if, just let's just start with the basics. Natural law, natural law and see if it's consistent with my example. Natural law being the, the, moral, um, uh, uh, the, the, the moral human, um, the unchanging moral principles instilled in you as a, as, as, as a human being and the basis for all human conduct, you know? Do not kill, do not judge. Some people say, oh, well, uh, Christianity is no, no, no different than, 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 say, Islam. Do you remember on the news, uh, it was not, not too long ago, where someone, they attacked a, a, a mosque in um, New, New Zealand a, in the name of Christianity. Well, what makes your religion, and so what, how do I answer? How do I answer to that? Let me answer this question with a question. Did you notice that every single time when an Islamic terrorist bombs or stabs or drives over people, killing, guaranteed was the very next thing that we hear on the news. The, the news, what's the, we all know. Oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't judge an entire religion based on the actions of a few. Are they right? Yes, we shouldn't judge a whole religion based on the actions of a few. <clears throat> no, we don't judge uh, Islam based on ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Al-Shabaab or the Taliban or Boko Haram. No, judge the teachings and the example of the leader of the religion. With the same measure that we judge our Lord Jesus Christ. And don't lower your standards. The leader of Islam say, just, just pick one. Robbed people to help support his religion and all this is of course backed up in many 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 uh, hist historical books uh, had people assassinated for criticizing his religion behead beheaded hundreds of Jews ordered his followers to execute anyone who tried to leave the re religion bought and sold and owned black slaves tortured people for money had nine wives and actually I have literally two more pages of stuff but it's too, um, it, it's, it's, the, the things are too, uh, you know, too shameful to even speak of. 
But no, the Lord Jesus Christ says, look at my example. It speaks for itself. Does my example violate your moral principles? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, self-control? I rest my case. This should suffice to convince you, but let's keep going. What about the things that the leader of the religion says? Not just actions, how about what, what they say? Are they good? Are they accurate? Do they come true? You know, our Lord Jesus Christ predicted his own death and resurrection, and in the correct time frame, remember what he said? Three days, and they came true. Using the same measure of scrutiny, the leader of, say, the, the Mormon church, Joseph Smith, made many, many prophecies, many prophecies, and <clears throat> none of them came true. L let me give you a couple examples. Here's one. He says, he says uh, so uh, the, the, the person writing this down in the, in the book, he says, President Smith stated, then stated that the meeting had been called because God had commanded it, and it was made known to him by a vision, and the Holy Spirit, and it kind of continues, continues, for the coming of the Lord. So Joseph Smith is prophesizing now, saying, for the coming of the Lord, which was nigh even 56 years, should wind up the scene. But what is he saying? He's saying that from that moment, this, was, th this prophecy was spoken by Joseph Smith in 1835, He's saying that within 56 years of saying that, that the coming, that the, our Lord Jesus would, would come back. So just add 56 plus 1835 is 1891. The Lord never came back. It's 2019. Another example, he prophesied that the U.S. government would be overthrown within a few years. Few is like two, right, or three. I prophesy in the name of the Lord God of Israel, unless the United States redress the wrongs committed to them upon the saints in the state of Missouri and punish the crimes committed by her officers, that in a few years the government will be utterly overthrown and wasted, and there will be not, much, not, not be so much as a potsherd left for their wickedness in permitting the murder of men, women, and children, and, and so on and so on. So Joseph Smith made this prophecy in May 6, 1843. However, the United States, 150 years later, is still standing. Nothing was overthrown. You know that we have a... It's, it's in Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter uh, 18. It says, because the people asked, you know, when there's false prophets, how do we know or what do we do? It says, if, and if you say in your heart, how shall we know which word of the Lord has not spoken, which, which, which the Lord has not spoken, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that thing that is, uh, which, is which the Lord has not spoken, the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, you shall not be afraid of him. In other words, false prophet. If even one thing doesn't come true, this is a false prophet. <clears throat> third reason. Third reason why the Lord Jesus Christ didn't just say, yes, I am he. Going back now, remember, with the disciples. Yes, I am he. This, a third reason why he didn't just say, yes, I am he. Because his message goes even deeper. And that very hour, he cured what happened? He didn't just answer. He cured many of infirmities and afflictions and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. How long does it take to, to perform a miracle? Sometimes he makes clay. Um, one time a, a, a woman just touched him, and a power came out of him. Sometimes he doesn't do anything. Sometimes he just says, sometimes he just says get up and walk. So like a second, could take like a second or a fraction of a second. Thousands of miracles could have happened in just an hour. But did you notice? What's the deeper message? What is he telling to St. John the Baptist? What is he telling to us? That I have come 
because what did, what, what, what did it say? He had cured many of infirmities and afflictions and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. What is he saying? What is the Lord saying spiritually? I have come to cure of spiritual disease, to give sight to the spiritually blind. And just so that there is no doubt and no excuse for believing in me, I will cast out demons. Because he says in St. Matthew 12, if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? Satan can never, will never cast out another demon. Therefore, there is no ground left for any suspicion. I am the coming one, the one you are looking for. I am the Messiah. Look to my example. The fourth reason why the Lord Jesus Christ didn't just say, yes, I am he, is not just because Satan is listening or because he says, judge me based on my actions or because he says, I have a deeper message, a spiritual message, but also he calls us now. It's our, it's our turn now to call to action. Imitate me. You know, <clears throat> you know which famous passage always uh, uh, comes to mind? Um, I don't have it up here, but uh, St. James, St. James chapter 2. He says, <clears throat> he says, um, what does it profit, brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Um, can faith save him? If a brother is, is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, um, be warmed and filled, Depart in peace, be warm and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. This is St. James chapter 2. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ definitely showed faith by works. And that very hour, he cured many of infirmities and afflictions and evil spirits, and to many he gave, many blind he gave sight. But how can I perform miracles? Don't we perform miracles all the time? Small? Small? I will show you my faith by my works. Let's all try today, today or sometime this week, just to call someone or speak to them in person. Just call. But it has to be it has to be like out of your way, not just like downstairs during a rebbe. Out of your way to show extra faith to, to the Lord. So it's something that doesn't benefit you, but benefits someone else. And just spend a couple of minutes. How was your day? Speak about the Lord Jesus Christ or about uh, some problems or, or some mem share some memories in fellowship. Or maybe... Call someone up, someone that's been asking for your help for a long time. Small, just small miracle, small. And then we can see, but we just have to put some, a little bit of effort and we can see the Holy Spirit fill us and them and see the action of the Holy Spirit. Working, small thing, sincere. The last thing I wanted to say about the Lord, about is how the Lord Jesus Christ honored St. John the Baptist saying, For I say to you, among those born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. How can we follow his footsteps? There were many, I mean, he's a prophet. There were many prophets in the Old Testament, and they, didn't, they, they did bring them, they did turn their, uh, these people from their wicked ways, did they not? But, St. John know, knew that there were no more people going to be between him and the Lord Jesus Christ. He knew it was on his shoulders to soften the hearts of the people, to receive the message of the Messiah, which is to come. This is a big weight, and this is why the Lord says, among those born of women, there is none greater, not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. God loves humility like St. John. God loves resistance of evil like 
St. John's resistance to King Herod the Great. God loves the mortifying of the flesh as St. John denied himself of the luxurious life. Remember, we were earlier today, what he looked like, how he lived. I pray that I will get out of my little world, out of my comfort zone, and prepare people's hearts for the Lord, and to soften people's hearts for the Lord, just like St. John the Baptist did. And I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ teach me when it's better not to speak and just show by action, and to show me how to effectively evangelize to those who ask the question, but why Christianity? Why not a different religion? And to be ready. And to have conviction and to do it in conviction. To build the kingdom of God. And to show them the teachings of the action of other leaders. And then to show them the actions of the king of kings. The great I am. The way, the truth, and the life. And I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ continue to cure his people, not of just physical disease, but of spiritual disease, spiritual blindness, and to help us all, all here today to go out, out, out of our way and to just reach out to other people. You can't imagine how many, how many of us, we're, we're, we are all hurting. We are all hurting, aren't we? And we come here, the hospital, this is the hospital to, to come and get healed. And, and to, 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 so that the Holy Spirit can work in us, so we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, and to experience the Holy Spirit to fill us, and to evangelize as St. John evangelized, preparing the way for the Lord, leading by action, leading by example, not in hypocrisy, but in sincerity, and glory to God forever. Amen. Thank God for this word, and may we all be really uh, imitator of Christ, as St. Paul says. Uh, let's pray, and then we'll give the barak, and then we're uh, heading to the park, which is right, uh, right, right one mile away from here, so to see you all at the picnic. We'll pray together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Finally, Lord, hear our prayers and supplications through the prayers and supplications of all your saints, especially of St. Mary, through your blood who shared on the cross, Lord, hear us when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily, forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass. Lead us not temptation, but deliver us from the evil. In Christ, thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, and blessing. Now may the love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Go in peace, peace be with you all.